Welcome to my channel. Today uh, I'm going to do something different. I usually do daily news clips. But today is Memorial Day in the United States of America. And that is the day that we honor those who have given their lives for freedom. Regardless of what the purposes were of the elites who started the wars. The men that serve in them serve honorably for the most part. I lost my cousin Donald Leroy Carlson during the Vietnam War and so I dedicate this to him. Before I get started I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. I want you to know that I deeply appreciate you viewing my videos and commenting and coming back over and over again from all over the world. A while ago, one of my viewers asked me to do some videos on the Vietnam War. And I thought about that for a long time because it's a very divisive topic. But as some of you may know, I am a member of the Vietnam Veterans for Factual History a group that seeks to uncover and tell the truth about the Vietnam War. And so in the end I decided I was going to do this. And this may become the beginning of a series uh, which I would title Understanding the Vietnam War. But if you're going to understand the Vietnam War, the first thing you have to do before you do anything else if you, is you have to understand who Ho Chi Minh was. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. Who was Ho Chi Minh? I have written a piece about it, uh, and I'm going to read from that because if I, if I go unscripted, I'll take forever, so... One note I want to make before I begin, this presentation is based upon a highly footnoted article that I wrote a few years ago. I will put the link to that article in the description of this video for those who want to check the accuracy of my statements. To understand the Vietnam War, you first have to understand who Ho Chi Minh was. Millions of words have been written about Ho Chi Minh. He has been called the George Washington of Vietnam a devoted nationalist who loved his country, a brilliant leader who fought for independence with a ragtag army of sandal-clad peasants and defeated the greatest power in the world. It all sounds very romantic, but it's also completely false. Ho Chi Minh was a dedicated communist, a member of the inner circle of the Soviet Comintern, and a protege of Dmitry Manuelisky, the right-hand man of both Lenin and Stalin. His supposedly ragtag army of peasants was trained by the Mao's Red Chinese Army and armed with modern weapons by the Red Chinese and Russians. After all this time, why do we still argue about the Vietnam War? About who Ho Chi Minh was? As William Duker, the uh, foremost biographer of, of Ho wrote, the question of Ho Chi Minh's character and inner motivations lies at the heart of the debate in the United States over the morality of the conflict in Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh was born Nguyen Sinh Cong. He was named Nguyen Tat Thanh, following Vietnamese tradition, when he achieved adolescence. He was the son of Nguyen Sinh Sak Hue. He was born in a small village named Kim Lin in the district of Nam Don, part of the province of Nay An in southern North Vietnam, about halfway between Hanoi and Hue. Nay An was a hotbed of revolutionary activity and was brutally repressed by the French. For example, Fan Boy Chow, one of the most respected Vietnamese nationalists, was born in Nay An and began his activism there. Ho left Vietnam in 1911 under the pseudonym Ba to avoid arrest by the French and traveled by French merchant vessel to France. 
For a while, he worked aboard French merchant, merchant vessels. Unproven claims place him in London and in the United States at various times and places. This is one example. This will be the first of as many as 75 different pseudonyms that he would use in his life, finally becoming Ho Chi Minh when he returned to Vietnam. In 1917, he settled in France and began attending socialist meetings. He was an avid learner and soaked up everything he could about socialism and activism. In 1919, he moved in with Phan Chu Trinh and Phan Bang Trung, two prominent Vietnamese nationalists living in France who were part of a group known as the Five Dragons, all of whom were advocating for Vietnamese independence. They wrote pamphlets under the nom de plume Nguyen I Hoc, meaning Nguyen the Patriot. Ho would later assume that pseudonym and apply, imply that he was the author of all of the pamphlets they wrote. This is how he became known as a Vietnamese nationalist, a lie that is still believed by many, including scholars who ought to know better. In 1920, he was involved in the founding of the French Communist Party, and he wrote, quote, on the day when millions of oppressed Asians wake up, they will form a colossal force capable of overthrowing imperialism, and they will aid their brothers in the West in the task of total emancipation from capitalist exploitation. Asia would play an active role in carrying out the world revolution, unquote. The following year, he traveled to Russia and began his communist training. By the time he returned to Southeast Asia, not Vietnam, in 1924, he was a dedicated Stalinist and a paid agent of the Soviet Comintern. His mission was to turn the entirety of Southeast Asia into a communist dictatorship. He spent time in Hong Kong. He teamed up with Fanboy Chow in Hong Kong and with him formed the Vietnam Tan Nien Kak Mang Dong Chi Hoi the Vietnam Youth Revolutionary Comrades Association. He also met Ho Hak Lam, also known as Ho Chi Minh. Notice how he constantly takes other people's names. Phan Boi Chow was a popular nationalist who had a large following, the Vietnam Quoc Phuc Ho, and extensive international contacts. He had united Vietnamese nationalists of all religions in the early 20th, 20th century, arguing that the, the traditional anti-Catholicism was counterproductive <clears throat> and that all nationalists should unite in a common cause to expel the French. Phan Boi Chow represented a serious threat to Ho's hegemony, but as he would do many times, Ho formed an association of convenience ingratiating himself with the active Vietnamese nationalist movement until he gained enough power to overthrow them. He later facilitated Phan Boi Chow's arrest by the French, effectively neutering him and assuming leadership of his movement. Many lesser Vietnamese nationalists were assassinated by his henchmen. Eventually, he would rid himself of all of the Vietnamese nationalists. In 1930, he formed the Vietnamese Communist Party, but the Comintern insisted on renaming it to the Indo-Chinese Communist Party to reflect the Soviet goal of turning all of Indochina into a Soviet satellite. Using the alias Sung Wen, Ho founded the Indochina Communist Party at the first uh, conference in Hong Kong in 1930. I'm reading now a quote from Duker's book on Ho. Note that this was not just a Vietnamese Communist Party, an indication of Ho's intent to create a Soviet-style Union of Southeast Africa, Southeast Asia, excuse me, and that his true goal was communist unity rather than nationalism. Later on, orders from Moscow, Ho was sent by the Comintern to organize communist parties throughout Southeast Asia. Ho first went to Siam, Thailand, where he disguised himself as a Buddhist monk and operated out of a temple in Yudan Thani province while forming the nucleus of a communist party there. Ho then went to Malaya, 
Singapore, and Indochina to preside over the creation of communist parties in those countries. This is quoting from William J. Duker's Ho Chi Minh. Ho would not return to Vietnam until 1940 at the start of World War II, 29 years after he had left. In 1945, he declared Vietnam's independence from France, but it would take another nine years with massive help from the Chinese to drive the French out of Vietnam. By, the time, by that time, there was no effective nationalist leaders left, and Ho stood alone as the leader of the North Vietnamese. He had assassinated almost all the nationalists. A few managed to escape to France. He has successfully carried out the orders of his masters in Moscow and was well on the way to turning all of Southeast Asia into a communist paradise, quote unquote. Only one thing stood in his way. The South Vietnamese, under the leadership of the Emperor Bao Dai and his appointed Prime Minister Ngo Dinh Diem. My next episode will deal with the many false facts that have obscured the truth about the war and fooled the entire Western world. Suffice it to say, that what you think you know about the Vietnam War is most likely a lie. From beginning to end, the war has been lied about. The North Vietnamese communists were very adept at propaganda, and they managed to get their propaganda to become what we call the accepted version of the war. But probably 80% or more of it is absolutely false. If you have any questions or you want to talk about this, just put something in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions. But I can tell you that what you think you know about the Vietnam War is a lie. As for you, my followers, as I always do, I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you will be healthy, that you'll live a long time, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. I pray for the same thing for every single person that you love. Most of all, I pray that you, my viewers, will be anxious for nothing, despite this crazy mixed up world we live in. Anxious for absolutely nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.